everybody, Matt with Classic Farms, and with me for the first time is Brandon. So folks, we have a fantastic opportunity for you. We got in a small number of Swiss rifles, and Swiss rifles always super popular, so we're very happy to have them in. And folks, you know, we have the run of the gamut basically on the table for you here. What we have is everything from the 1889 antique rifle all the way up through the K31 carbine of World War II and slightly beyond. And you know, again, folks, these are extremely popular, so we recommend if you're in the market for one, if you've been looking for a while, jump on this opportunity because they will not last long. I doubt that they'll last the day. But what we're gonna start with is the oldest rifle. So, Brandon, if you could go ahead and hold up this 1889. Now, the 1889 rifle is an antique, so there's no need to have this sent to an FFL. It can go directly to your home. It is chambered in the 7.5 by 54 and a half black powder cartridge. And you know, this is kind of the, the granddaddy of the the family here if you want to say it so you know these are schmidt rubin rifles so they were designed by a colonel uh schmidt and rubin i think it was a uh, rudolph schmidt and edward rubin so uh you know one of them basically designed the straight pull action and the other one designed the cartridge um in this case rubin is the engineer who designed the cartridge and schmidt designed the action um you know, very interesting in that they are straight pull rifles. Basically what that means is that the bolt is encased in a sleeve that has uh, kind of camming grooves in it. And so as you push straight forward and straight back, it rotates the bolt for you. You don't have to lift the handle and pull back or push forward and, and come down. Um, you know, obviously it's really an interesting historical piece. You aren't probably gonna find a lot of 7.5 by 54 and a half uh, ammunition out there, but you can reload it um, using 7.5 by 55 brass and it is a full brass cartridge. In fact, one of the interesting things about uh, Colonel Edward Rubin is that he also is the first person to design a full metal cartridge. So there you go, a little historical interesting fact there. Oh yeah, just remember people that these these uh, rifles are probably the most accurate of their time for each one of them, from black powder all the way to the K31. I mean, they're very known for being some of the most accurate of the World War II era. And the fact that you could probably find some of the most quality ammunition from GP11 or reload that 75 by 55 Absolutely. I mean, so the Swiss really renowned for the, uh, the emphasis they put on individual marksmanship. Obviously, it's not as large of a country as some of the ones around it, so when it came to military power, they really focused on that individual marksmanship level. Um, you can see that this does have a sling on it. The majority of all of these rifles on the table that we received have leather slings. Now, they're not all original slings. It looks like some of them are from later. And we're not guaranteeing a sling with every rifle because there are some without it. Um, while we're on that note, also the front sight slash muzzle protectors, most of the rifles have them, but we're not guaranteeing it because there were some rifles that arrived without them. So uh, keep that in mind when you're looking at that. Um, moving on from the 1889, so they developed an intermediary rifle, the 8996, and then that rifle was developed into the 9611. So the 9611, one of the distinctive features about that is this grafted in pistol grip here on the stock. At this point, we are shooting the 7.5 by 55 smokeless powder round. And uh, again, straight pull design by Schmidt. Uh, Ruben designed the ammunition, the, the new you know, smoke, uh, smokeless powder ammunition. Um, you know, it's interesting, it's got this uh, six round magazine. Uh, you'll see that this has kind of a, a flat magazine, but it's angled down, and uh, we'll compare that to some other things later. Uh, it's, you know, at the time, of course, you know, we're talking the beginning of the 20th century, so everyone was still using those very long rifles in World War I, and so uh, kind of like the Gewehr 98 and stuff. Uh, so you still have this very long rifle. Now, the reason why this is the 9611 is that what they were trying to do is take these older 8996 rifles and match them in specification to the new issue K1911 long rifle. So this would be like a Gewehr 1911. Um, so you can see overall very similar. The Gewehr 90, uh, the 1911 has an integral uh, pistol grip. So you know, they just manufactured the stock that way. And uh, you know these have really nice. You know you can drift adjust the front sight for windage, and you have a nice you know uh, elevation adjustment on the rear sight. Uh, these things go out. Uh, looks like 2,000 yards. Bit optimistic. I mean, yeah, I probably on an individual level really <laughs> kind of optimistic. Although, you know, certainly, you know, reaching out five, six hundred yards with this thing would be certainly doable. And uh, and they still, you know, have lots of shooting festivals on a regional level in Switzerland where they still compete with these rifles. Um, you can see at this time we still have the kind of Bakelite knobs here on the bolt handle. Uh, one of the things I find really interesting is the kind of safety feature on these rifles. So you can see right now, this ring is sideways. And so this is kind of unsafe. You can't open the action. If you pull this back and turn it, where it's now vertical, you can now open the action 
and when you close it, you know, you, this is now cocked. All right, so it is now, uh, you know, something where you can uh, reach a nice gloved hand in there or something. You don't have to try to pinch a little bolt handle. And, uh, you know, so that's something to keep in mind because they were in Switzerland where the winners meant that they were frequently having gloves on their hands. They couldn't necessarily have just, you know, something that was very small for an ungloved hand. Um, moving on from the K1911 long rifle, we also have some of these K1911 carbines. So, of course, they developed a short rifle for things like cavalry, but also kind of second line soldiers. So if you had like a Jeep driver or a medic or something where they didn't need the long rifle to reach all the way out to a normal infantry range, then you had this smaller carbine version, uh, the exact same action, same magazine, uh, same caliber, just with a slightly shorter barrel on it, basically. Um, now, one thing uh, that we're going to compare to the next rifle, which is the K31. The K31 is not actually a Schmidt Rubin design, so by this point, Colonel Schmidt is dead. It still uses the ammunition 7.5 by 55 designed by Colonel Rubin, but uh, it actually does have several features that are a little bit different. So I'm going to hand this one here to Brandon. And Brandon, we're going to demonstrate how you take the bolt out of this. So we're going to unlock the bolt, pull back. We're going to pull down on this little lever on the front. All right, so. K1911 rifles have the uh, locking lugs basically to what we call the rear of the bolt. And as opposed to on the K31, it's at the front of the bolt. One of the things that this let us do here, we'll, we'll hold them up here. So you can see the locking lugs are here on the rear of the bolt versus up here, it's on the front of the bolt. So this is the K31. One of the things that let, let them do is first off, it's kind of a stronger action because you're, you're locking into a thicker part of metal in the receiver near the chamber. And then also, it lets them shorten the, uh, the receiver of the rifle, meaning that you can have a longer barrel. So we're gonna try to line these up. So if we kind of line them up, you can see on the K31, the receiver ends slightly shorter than on the K1911. And yet they're the same length overall, which means that you were able to get a longer uh, barrel on the K31, which of course leads to some increased muzzle velocity improvements, and uh, and that lets you have a little bit of a flatter trajectory with the same ammunition. Um, this is also where I wanted to point out about the magazine differences. So each of these rifles has that angled but flat bottom magazine, and you can see this has like a curved flat sitting magazine, if that makes sense. So it's it's oriented in a flat uh, plane, but it's curved as opposed to being flat and then at an angle. So folks, I mean, other than that, you know, the uh, K31 and the K1911 carving are designed to be fairly similar. Uh, we have moved to aluminum knobs on the bolt handle as another distinct feature. So I think we've covered kind of all of the little features that you see as, as differences. Um, we have all of them on the website for sale and they are ready and rearing to go to come to a new home. Uh, if you are a Swiss collector, you know, I know that sometimes these rifles are a little hard to find out at the market, so we're very happy to have this shipment. And if you're new, these are a fantastic rifle to start with if you wanted to start a collection of, uh, of military rifles because, like Brandon was saying earlier, these are extremely accurate rifles. 7.5 by 55 is still made and still available commercially, and so you won't have a problem finding like a, an obscure cartridge. Uh, they might not carry it at your, your local ammo shop, but you can certainly find it online. Oh, yeah. So, uh, folks, if you, uh, you know, are interested in these, make sure to jump on it fast. Like I said, it is a fairly small shipment, so they, we do expect them to sell it fast. And don't forget, we actually have two special edition rifles behind us. So, this rifle is a K31, and when I said earlier that they still have those individual shooting competitions with these rifles, uh, that's what this is. You can actually see there is a sticker for a Cantonzel Schützenfest, which is, a Canton is kind of like a, a state or maybe a county in Switzerland. So this is a, a regional shooting festival, and we can see here on the bottom that there's the entrance. Uh, it says Führer Franz, and then this is a presumably maybe in his contestant number. Um, but yeah, I mean this is really cool. You can see uh, that this was used as early, uh, sorry, as late as 2018 in a shooting festival. So you're going to have an option to purchase this rifle specifically. Um, Overall, I think it's a fantastic condition rifle. Uh, one of the things I love is the Swiss Crest. You want to hold that out to the camera? Um, you know, the, the Swiss Crest, I think, is a very uh, handsome-looking insignia that's on these rifles. And, uh, you know, 
interesting enough, we've mentioned it before about other Swiss rifles, about P marks and things. So on a, a lot of these rifles, we have noticed P marks because uh, it is a, a tradition in Switzerland where after military service, you can purchase your, your service firearm and take it home. And don't forget about this rifle too. This is actually a finalist, finalist. rifle that was shot in a competition in 2018. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's a really interesting provenance that we have a little bit more history about. It's more recent use. And so there will be a custom option for this rifle specifically. Also, we have this rifle. This is another K31 we have. But what's interesting is that this one is not chambered in 7.5 by 55. This rifle is actually chambered in 22. So if we open this up, then you'll see that there is a strange addition to the bolt head here. Let's uh, try to get a closer look at that. So you can see there's almost a little cradle there attached to the top of the bolt. And while it's gonna be really difficult for the camera to get in there, there's a barrel sleeve that's got some kind of like, uh, looks like rubber grommets or something holding it in place and it actually runs the full length of this barrel. So it's not like a half barrel sleeve that only stops here. Um, so this is actually designed to shoot 22 long rifle. So this could be like a military trainer rifle or, uh, or something like that where they could get them used to handling the firearm, but with a lower ammunition cost because you're not shooting the full power 7.5. Um, it does mean that it's a single shot rifle with these parts installed. There is a magazine, but um, obviously the magazine is only intended for the original caliber. Um, but we actually took it outside and, and kind of experiment a little bit and it, it's really actually a lot of fun even for just a single shot uh you know to be able to just kind of you just drop it in point it the right way into this little sled and it chambers shoots extracts ejects it it was actually really interesting to see this rifle in action um don't worry folks we didn't do anything that would harm the rifle but we did you'll know, see that we wanted to make sure if everything was still working on it um so you'll have a custom option for this rifle in particular I don't think I've ever seen a similar rifle like this in a Swiss rifle. I think they're pretty rare from what I've seen. I haven't uh, come across any in my experience in the gun industry. I do know that people do clamor after them when they do see them for the first time because they are seemingly quite rare and, like Matt said, very fun to shoot regardless of what you're doing. Subsonics, supersonics, doesn't matter. It's a great time and whoever ends up buying one will love it for sure. And to give you a little bit, when he says in his experience, you know, so Brandon used to work full time in a retail gun facility in person as opposed to our, our website kind of uh, business. And so he has an hours, uh, years of experience working in the retail and also as a farm trainer, right? Yes, That's right. So. instructor. So, you know, he's, he's definitely uh, got a lot of experience where if, if he hasn't seen many come across them, you know, in, in his retail experience, then, you know, I, I definitely agree with him that it's something that's very uncommon. So one lucky person will be able to take that home because this is the only rifle we have with that, that conversion kit in it, unfortunately. Um, we wish there was more. In fact, Clint was talking about, uh, you know, wanting to buy it. And the guys overruled him. They said, no, this isn't something we can keep from the public. We had to prize grubby mitts off it just for you guys. That's right. So keep an eye out for that uh, custom option. And then don't forget, we also have the giveaway going on. So we still have a Barrett 50 caliber rifle. It's going to come prepackaged with a Vortex Viper scope. It's the same setup that they shot down in Florida with Tavarish. And I mean, that video looked like a lot of fun. Did you catch that video? Oh, it was amazing. The fact that Clint got to go drive some Lamborghinis, shoot some guns, do mag dumps. I mean, I, I mean, it's like Miami Vice, sh driving Lambo, shooting guns, oh, yeah. doing a mag dump. Uh, you know, I mean, it just seemed like a really amazing time for them down there. Um, makes me a little bit jealous, I have to admit. He gets to have all the fun. All the fun. But uh, Clint, we love you. Um, but guys, don't forget, your time's running out on this. So the absolute best way to sign up, there's gonna be lots of ways. You can do the social media thing, refer friends. But in my opinion, the absolute best way is always subscribe to our email notifications. That way you don't miss anything we put out. You get the new videos, you get these limited inventory items. You know, you'll, you'll be the first one in the know. So folks, we appreciate you coming down to classicfirearms.com. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. They're gonna put that little logo up there so that you don't miss any of our videos. Appreciate your time and God bless.